Um, so I will start today's meeting saying it's a great honor and a real pleasure for me to open this Franco-Mexican workshop on artificial intelligence, the first one of its kind. I really wish you were here, or I should say, I wish we were there. Unfortunately, as we had planned two years ago, unfortunately, it hasn't been the case right now, but let's hope next year it will be, it will be possible. I welcome you all, particularly Hervé Luga and Victor Larios, that I would like to thank for organizing this uh, workshop. And uh, I would really like to start by thanking uh, Morgan uh, Uzena, which is the project manager without whom we wouldn't be here today, probably. Um, this meeting also marks an achievement in terms of bilateral scientific work between Mexico and France, and I'm sure years of work and research to come. In this sense, it gives me great pleasure to extend to you all a very warm welcome on behalf of the MUFRAMEX, who is hosting this event. I would briefly present MUFRAMEX to all of you, very briefly. Um, MUFRAMEX is a bilateral structure which depends on the Ministry of Higher Education in France. Can you pass next? Well, I'm going very quickly, I promised. <laughs> so we are a bilateral organization um, which depends from the Ministry of Higher Education in France, the MESRI, and its homologue in Mexico, the Secretaria de Educación Pública. I would like to welcome today particularly uh, Dr. Barriguete, Director General de Políticas Educativas, Buenas Prácticas y Cooperación, who, as I see, is here with us uh, today from the Secretaría de Educación uh, Pública. Uh, the mission of MIFORMEX, um, as you can see, uh, we, uh, as I say, we depend on education, basically, but as you can see, most of the uh, key institutions in cooperation are or belong to our board. If you could pass it on. Uh, last but not least, certainly the Université de Toulouse, where we are right now, I don't think you can really see this absolutely stunning building that maybe you can see the beautiful windows and all this beautiful gardens, the Jardin de Plantes that we have, uh, that we have here at, uh, at our university. The mission of uh, MUFRAMEX is essentially to encourage the internationalization of Mexican and French universities, particularly with specific partners. We have recently opened offices of the three best Mexican universities, after the UNAM probably, who already had opened an office in Paris when I arrived in Toulouse. I'm thinking of the Universidad de Guadalajara, la Universidad Autónoma de Nuevo León y la Universidad Autónoma de México. So our goals are mainly three, to promote the creation of thematic networks and strengthen the existing ones, two, to advise, support and guide our institutional partners in their projects and to create and provide support tools for bilateral cooperation. So for whom? Essentially for institutions, but also for individuals within the academic world. Uh, therefore, we set up projects, activities and programs for and between institutions within the frame of priority subjects within the bilateral agenda, Mexico, France, or France, Mexico. And in, in individual terms, we work for professor, researchers, and researchers, which is the two categories we have in France, advising academic staff and researchers and empowering them to build up research projects and or training courses with partners from both, uh, from both countries. I would um, would like to finish by uh, thanking uh, certainly the uh, Universidad de Guadalajara, uh, especially the Smart Cities Innovation Center and uh, CUSEA. I would also like to thank the IRIT, certainly CIMAT, CIMBESTAF, ANITI, the University of Montpellier, and the Institut de Sciences des Données, as well as Continental, IBM, 
and inside Empresas. Um, I would also like to thank all the colleagues here present for being here with us in what, what we hope will be the first step towards a much more closed cooperation between French and Mexican colleagues within the field of uh, artificial, uh, artificial intelligent, intelligence. Thank you for being here, being here to, to teach, being here to foster uh, cooperation. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sonia. So um, to start, I propose that we, we've got a, a look at the, the school global schedule. Uh, then we will start a uh, formal presentation of institution. And uh, then uh, we've got a more long presentation by uh, Sandrine uh, Maton, which is at the uh, head of the o Toulouse Open Data Initiative, Toulouse Metropole Open Data Initiative. Uh, then the courses will begin. I will just show you this schedule. Okay, so as you can see each day um, from, uh, from Monday to Wednesday is uh, split in two parts. Uh, the first part here is a general one uh, with uh, several, in, um, several speakers. Uh, as I just said before, we will have um, a first presentation of the institutions then a uh, presentation of the global objective of the school by Victor and me, uh, then the presentation about uh, Toulouse Open Data Initiative. Uh, then we will have two courses, one by Professor Anne Laurent and the other one by, Prof by Dr. Sylvain Cussat Blanc. And tomorrow we've got an industrial some industrial presentations and then uh, a first uh, word about what we are going to do on Thursday, which is a hackathon, and uh, then two courses, one by Dr. Francisco Ruiz Sanchez and the other by Professor Nathalie Hernandez. And on Thursday, we, we will set a virtual poster station. I will talk about a little bit about that uh, later. And then uh, we, we show, uh, we uh, settle the hackathon organization and we got two courses, one about deep learning by Dr. David Simoncini and the other about data visualization by uh, Dr. Johan van Oerbeek, uh, which is currently here and will present CIMAT in a uh, few minutes. Um, so uh, to start, um, I, will, I will start by uh, presenting IRIT, then uh, I will let uh, Victor talk and uh, Anne and Johan. So do you have any questions about the organization at this stage? No. Thank you, Eve. So, um, to start, I will present uh, IRIT, which stands for Institut de Recherche en Informatique de Toulouse, uh, which is um, a research lab where several uh, speakers come from. So, IRIT uh, leads re research about computer science, and moreover, the interaction between computer science and its environment, and tries to, to make um, mankind in the center of research. And uh, Irit says that uh, it works for mankind and its environment at the heart of computer science. So research at Irit is uh, organized in um, five major scientific issues. One about system design and construction, which try, which aims to uh, generate reliable, safe, 
adaptive, di distributed, interconnected, and dynamic system design and construction. Uh, the second challenge is about real world digital modeling, how to uh, make digital mockups of uh, some parts of the real world. Um, it's generally imperfect, but we try to do it better by research. The, the third major scientific issue is the concept formalization for cognition and interaction. Then uh, toward environment aware, adaptive and autonomous systems. And the last one is to uh, try to go from raw data to intelligible information. And it would love that last one will have a lot of uh, interaction with what we are doing in this school because we want to use a lot of data and then to try to translate it into what something that is helpful for, um, for people. We also target uh, several strategical application areas. Um, the first one is about health, autonomy, living, and well being. Uh, there's a lot of interaction in Toulouse uh, with uh, um, doctors and other uh, research institutions in the field of health and in the fields of social science related to health. And uh, we, uh, we develop research, uh, a lot of research in that field, and we got a strategical application area. Uh, linked with that. So the second one, which is linked directly to this school, is about smart cities. Uh, we've got several new, um, uh, we've got several um, research groups working on smart, city, smart cities, and especially um, the Neo Campus Initiative, which is led by uh, Marie Pierre Glaze from IRIT, and which tries to um, to find practical use of uh, smart city sensors to uh, help to enhance uh, wellness into the city. Then, as you know, uh, Toulouse is, a, is the home place of Airbus. And so we get a lot of research about aerospace and transportation. I guess Nicola Vialet, we, which will present tomorrow, uh, Aniti will talk a little bit about that because Aniti is to use artificial intelligence initiative uh, dedicated especially to aerospace and transportation. Then we've got uh, social media and digital ecosystems and, um, and a, a large field linked with our um, huge number of students here in Toulouse uh, linked to education for learning and teaching uh, to try to uh, enhance uh, the education experience that uh, we provide our students. And at last, heritage and people security. Among that, there are one strategic action, which is um, at the link between, uh, between um, um, technically, technical computing, uh, technical storage of data, and the use of this by the way of using artificial intelligence. And for uh, and this uh, strategic action is called scientific computing, big data and artificial intelligence. So uh, let me describe briefly the organization of research at IRIT. To begin and to better understand the lab, um, one key point is that it's a huge lab. Um, I describe at this step a lot of structures, uh, a lot of uh, scient uh, key scientific challenges. And if we can um, try to tackle uh, such number of challenges, it's because uh, we're a lot of, uh, of people working in the lab. Uh, so we, co we cover in fact, close to all the, the research field in computer science, uh, except maybe some technical parts linked to cybersecurity, which are covered by another lab in Toulouse, but we cover close to all the fields of computer science. And we're at IRIT uh, close to uh, 600 members um, with permanent staff and um, 
other members, you can see uh, something like uh, 191 PhD students, uh, 124 uh, postdoctoral uh, and associate professors, and something like 260 researchers and associate professors. So it's a very huge lab. So um, to manage research at this, uh, at this level, uh, first, one thing that you have to know is that IRIT is a split laboratory. In fact, we are in several places uh, in Toulouse and more, uh, more generally in Occitania with seven locations. Uh, the main ones are in Paul Sabatier University and um, in the Toulouse uh, Engineer School called NSAID uh, with the most of the staff. But um, IRIT uh, gather researchers from all universities and uh, several engineer schools in Occitania. Uh, for example, um, I am from Toulouse 2 University, uh, Sylvain and David Simoncini, which will teach, um, are from Toulouse 1 University. And uh, in fact, we are in the same research team and people are located in several institutions, but are in the same laboratory and in the same research team. So this is, IRIT is a research unit, uh, which is in a technical um, language called UMR, Unité Mixte de, Re de Recherche, Mixed Research Unit, led by CNRS, the French National Research Institute, and uh, engineer school and universities. So if we look at uh, research organization um, by structures, research is split, is split among seven departments. And um, in, that, in those departments, one can find 25 research teams. Uh, you can see divided into departments um, uh, exhibit uh, large research topics and then we get teams which are more specialized inside uh, those departments. For example, uh, one can see the artificial intelligence here research department and there are three teams in that department, Adria, Lilac and Melody. Nathalie Hernandez, which will present a course, is from uh, Melody, for example. And for my part, I am from Reva in that department. So uh, we've got a lot of partnership. Uh, I'm not going to describe all that slide. And uh, we use uh, several research platforms. Um, which are used either for uh, experimenting or for helping researchers to um, to make uh, their um, to make some computations they need for the, for their research and or experiments they need for their research. So uh, we've got uh, one big um, computing environment, which is called OSIRIM, mainly designed for information retrieval but which has slightly evolved now for doing some uh, artificial intelligence uh, computing. Then uh, we, we use, we are a part of a national initiative uh, cloud, cloud, called um, uh, CloudMIP and Grid500, which is a national inf research infrastructure, Neo Campus that I described just before. And we've got some labs like uh, Connected Health Lab for Reals, which is uh, located uh, in a place too close to um, Pierre Fabre headquarters. Pierre Fabre is a, a medical, um, a medic uh, supplier. So uh, the, the research is close to uh, its uh, laboratory. Okay, I think that I will stop uh, here for now. And um, if you got some questions about the lab.
You can eventually raise your hands. No. It will be very interesting to get close to you for the e-health and the telehealth. So, well, later on, but congratulations. Okay, so I will let Victor present uh, his lab. Okay, thank you. Well, first of all, uh, I am very happy to be with you and, and to see some very old friends. We started uh, to connect in the year 2000 uh, in, in a conference, and we discussed how we can work together. And, and this cooperation is a result of, of that from a meeting from a conference when I was just a student. Uh, there were some professors like Yves Zuten, uh, Erbe, he was also like me, just uh, graduated from his PhD, and, and then they helped us to, to build at the University of Guadalajara our first PhD program because that was required to, to, to start doing serious collaboration. And <clears throat> then we uh, started to, to continue to see how we can improve. So this is a long journey, if we can see it, of two decades, more than two decades, but we are still here and we are very happy. What I'm going to present is the Smart Cities University um, Center, which is the only one in Guadalajara and probably the only one with this approach in, in the whole Mexico. But that makes uh, this big opportunity to collaborate on this big umbrella that we call Smart Cities. And we work a lot internationally with the IEEE as a big uh, association, uh, not only for the conferences, but also for, for uh, collaborating with other cities, as you will see on the presentation. Uh, well, Guadalajara is uh, the second city in Mexico in, in size of population with a very vibrant uh, uh, activity on technology. We call Guadalajara the Silicon Valley of Mexico. And we are very concerned about um, how to make social innovation with all this technology. And the mission of the university as a public university is to hold uh, our social impact in, in, in all the state. When, when I speak about the University of Guadalajara, it's also probably the second in size in Mexico because we hold now close to 300,000 students. So a lot of campuses that work in a network inside of, of the university, as well as at the University of Toulouse that has a lot of locations, campuses uh, that are divided on the different uh, thematic areas of, of research. Well, <clears throat> what we do in the smart cities is connecting the real world to the digital world. And then on this digital world, we can do many things that we cannot play in the real world. And we find the optimal solutions. So we deal a lot with complex systems. But today, as a big umbrella, we deal a lot with many areas of knowledge. And the core of what we're doing is just bring the technology and solutions that we can enable with technology to all these areas that usually they don't know how to apply or, or to work this, with this technology. We were born in 2012 with a big project in Guadalajara that was uh, involving close to 200 organizations in, in, the, in the city, uh, plus uh, the government, industry, uh, also uh, the MIT with uh, the aim to, to create uh, the first smart city in Mexico uh, model that we call it the Ciudad Creativa Digital or the Digital Creative Smart City. And also the uh, Accenture for the business and, and from London. And also we connected with the social innovation that was created in Barcelona and with an office that was in Spain helping with all that uh, social innovation. What was the most important is uh, we were looking for a tangible area to, to develop uh, all the technology that we can transfer to other cities that started in 2012, 2013, 
I was doing a sabbatical year, helping to develop all this project uh, with a lot of challenges, mainly uh, with the transition of governments. So what was expected in the master plan with a vision to 20 years uh, was probably slowed and reduced to a small part uh, because of the different transitions of the governments that we that were very hard to, to, to manage. But the project is still there. And, and some part of the project was developed and that uh, very fast uh, helped us to create a network with all the experiences that we learned and that we're learning on the development of, of Guadalajara, not as still as, as a smart city because that never ends, but we connected with other cities uh, in different sizes, different continents, places like Kansas City in the US, Casablanca in, in Morocco, Trento in, in Italy and Wuxi. And we still have this cooperation every year with a conference we created in 2015. Uh, and then just, just to say that uh, it's a very size, a big, big size uh, city. We grow very fast every year. Uh, and which is one of the first uh, places where, where you feel that there are problems in the city is with the mobility. So we have more than 100 kilometers of bicycle lanes because that makes green mobility. And we started also with electric uh, vehicles and public transport moving on, on energy, on electric uh, energy. So we have a lot of things to say. Th th these are different areas. Guadalajara is like uh, some Euro European city in the downtown. And then you go to other areas and it looks more like uh, in the, in the uh, US uh, designs. So, we said at the university that we needed uh, not to wait 20 years to develop the first skills on our students on smart cities. So we created with the industry, the first living lab in, in, in our campus uh, where we have the Smart Cities Innovation Center. And based on that, these are the different areas that we uh, work. Some of them start from the data extraction uh, based on, on the IoT, then how to store and manage all that data, uh, run the analytics, uh, then how to visualize that data. And today we cannot escape in all that steps to, to start using artificial intelligence inside. Uh, what we can say is that we uh, also have uh, support of infrastructure like a 80 core uh, server from uh, donated from IBM. And then we, we have a new data center uh, which is aimed to be the supercomputed center of, of the university with more than 10,000 cores and GPU um, also resources inside uh, that opened it recently in the past three years. And, and based on that, <clears throat> we spend a lot of time just with the government and with the industry looking how do we can enable the big ecosystem. What I want to show in this part is that we got the recognition from the state government to have one area for uh, sustainability and economic uh, circular economies that now it calls uh, sustainable uh, cities that bring some funding, uh, continuous funding every year. And we are with them helping with the industry because the model now is to work in consortia. Uh, and this is just uh, to show how we were working on this year with different companies, small companies from the ecosystem and big companies. Uh, and that's why we wanted to invite industry to come to this uh, school. So this is our, we have like two or three days of, of the week that we meet together. We see how we can uh, advance in projects that can have some uh, value for, for the companies and, and for the technology they are managing, how they can work together and how we can keep uh, research, innovation and, and social impact all in that uh, package, which is not easy but it's happening. And this is just an example of how we divided pro uh, one project in this uh, kind of, of uh, assemblies. Most important is that we used to work a lot in a model of quadruple helix. So we speak a lot uh, and our unit is not as big as with our bed, 600 researchers. We have five uh, professors which are leading on, on the Smart Cities Innovation Center and just with our PhD students, we grow to uh, 15, 20 people, depending on the PhD students we have. 
And then we, we integrate with our master's students, uh, our PhD is in information technologies. Uh, then we integrate with our master uh, in information technologies, where we have usually another 10 students. So we go through, through 30. And then we have a connection, a strong connection with the students in the bachelor degree that usually comes to do some practices, uh, some social service, or sometimes the, their projects that they develop uh, with us. So we incubate them to go through the master and then the PhD. And, and easily we, we come to become uh, about 35 uh, continuous in, in our team. Uh, we have very nice facilities uh, and place to, to work. Um, unfortunately, all this uh, pandemic time, all facilities were closed, but we uh, solved it to work a lot uh, remotely. So now we have a lot of, of activities also that, that we can hold. And that's all from my side. If there is any question, happy to answer. If not, uh, we can let for the, for the next presenter. Okay, thanks, Victor. So the next presenter is uh, Professor Anne Laurent from the University of Montpellier. Hello, thank you for allowing me to present. So I am just about to present you the Data Science Institute from Montpellier. So as you know, Montpellier is very close to, to Toulouse. So we are neighbors uh, within Europe in, uh, in South of France and we work a lot together with uh, Hervé, uh, who I want to, to thank for, for this uh, kind invitation to, to speak today. So we have the, the sea, we are at the seaside, uh, very, very close to Montpellier. So we are some pictures and Montpellier is may, maybe um, uh, one university you, you have heard about because we are one of the oldest universities in, uh, in Europe, especially for medicine uh, in terms of uh, school uh, uh, and active universities. We, we are among the, the oldest ones. So uh, all this put together, uh, what we think uh, is that data science is a kind of key for working together and for putting and gathering people uh, regarding research, also regarding uh, teaching and uh, all our activities. And what we try to do at the Data Science Institute, it's not to, to do research. We, we don't lead research projects, but we try to uh, allow all our colleagues and companies to use data science. So our goal is to disseminate the use of data science and with uh, 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 the idea in mind that uh, open science is one of the keys to do this. Uh, regarding data science, what, what we do think is that um, we have to build some kind of steps and levels, uh, starting from data, of course, how to share data, but also how to facilitate the use of data science through services. It can be like, for instance, how to put data in a fair, um, fair way, meaning that uh, this data can be uh, easily uh, reused and used. Uh, it can be like uh, how to put your data in some um, nice data warehouse and so, and so on. And at some point, we need some human resources to, to help people to choose which algorithms are, are the best and uh, what to do with, uh, with the data, how, how to exploit this. So to do this, we try to um, have some kind of events. It can be data challenges, putting um, students together to, to exploit and to, to look at the data and what it can be discovered from this data. Uh, we also lead some uh, training and some courses. We have a special curriculum regarding uh, data, data science and open data. And we, we try also to provide some uh, maps on what are the existing, for instance, existing uh, teaching units, what are the existing uh, research teams uh, working on this, uh, all these programs. And we, we have also uh, some, uh, some uh, computers and infrastructures I will uh, present this uh, just uh, later on. For doing this, we, 
basically we, we rely a lot on uh, existing projects and for instance here is a project based on uh, bioinformatics and biostatistics to allow colleagues uh, in the special area of uh, biology and health to to use data science so all uh, all this together, we, we try to have some uh, units uh, specialized in some um, data and uh, some um, some uh, algorithms uh, when when it's needed. And regarding uh, IoT, one of the projects we 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 try to to, to work on uh, in Montpellier is a human at home project. Uh, here it's not the real and the actual flat, but. Uh, there is a flat somewhere in Montpellier. I'm not allowed it to, to tell you where exactly. There is a flat somewhere in Montpellier, which is uh, fully equipped with a lot of sensors. And we try to deal with uh, this data, not only regarding data science and data mining, but also regarding um, sociology, uh, law science, what is allowed, what is not allowed. Is the law sufficient? to regulate this kind of usage and so on. So this is a like of uh, pluridisciplinary uh, project that we, and an example of what we, we work on in, uh, in Montpellier regarding all these uh, topics. Because what we try to do is to address all the questions uh, that can be raised when uh, dealing with data, from collecting the data to using the data to to exploiting the data and to opening the data. And there is also uh, something we try to work on is uh, the death of data, what data to delete, because storing and collecting data is very easy, but uh, it can be kind of a problem if we keep and we store all the data without, you know, um, having a look of uh, what is the impact uh, of uh, storing all the data. And we, we have this kind of uh, supercomputing resources, the same as uh, in, uh, in Toulouse. And we, we try to, to work to complete all these uh, resources so as to provide the colleagues with, um, with, uh, with this. And as I mentioned, uh, the Data Science Institute is not the place for doing and conducting research. Well, we rely of, on the research labs, and there are almost uh, 20 labs, 20 labs in Montpellier, uh, looking at uh, data science as a research topic, how to deal with deep learning, how, how to deal with uh, textual data, how to deal with pattern mining, and so on, ontologies, and so on. So what we try to build is this kind of interface for facilitating the the, the use of data science and of course uh, we, we rely, as I said, on the research units uh, on, the, on the slides that are displayed as a, as a logo. We also uh, work with the open science uh, people, dedicated teams uh, within our universities and uh, research. Um, um, and uh, we also, as I said, we also work together with uh, Hervé and all the teams from Toulouse to, to build this, uh, this and to work on these topics uh, at the scale of, the, of our big, uh, big area uh, called Occitanie. So here are some, uh, we, uh, some um, addresses and uh, links uh, that uh, you may be interested in if you want more information. Uh, do not hesitate to, to contact me if you if you want also. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Anne. And uh, it's nice it's nice that you, you you accept to participate to that school. And uh, then the next presenter is Johan, Dr. Johan von Orbeck from CIMAT. Okay, and we hear you, we see you, but not your skin, okay. your screen yet. Yes. Now it's okay. Uh, okay, only I have to 
Noch einen Moment. Okay. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes. Okay. Well, good morning, good, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Johan van Horebeek. Um, I work at the Research Center of Mathematics uh, in Spanish, Centro de Investigación en Mathematics. And it's actually uh, the, the building that you are seeing right now. Uh, it's, it's the main building of, of what's called CMAT. Um, actually, I have a, a very short uh, presentation. Um, let me say first a few words about what CMAT is about. Um, CMAT is actually a federal research center. Um, last year it was celebrating its 14th uh, anniversary. It's a, it's a public research center and it depends of, on CONACYT. CONACYT is the Mexican equivalent of the Mexican of the National Science Foundation. Um, so um, it's part actually of a whole network of about 25 institutes and each institute focuses on one particular area. At CIMAT, we focus on pure and applied mathematics. We focus on probability and statistics, and we focus on computer science. Now, if I mention computer science, um, the major part of activities of computer science is actually related to what you can call computational mathematics, or let's say computer science, related to statistics, applied mathematics, and, and so on. So CIMAT is a research center. Um, it has uh, several uh, study programs, and they are at, at different levels, ranging from undergraduate level, together with the University of Guanajuato, the master level, and a PhD program. And those programs are exactly split up in those three areas. Uh, so for instance, we have a master program in computer science, a master program in probability and statistics, and a master program in pure and applied mathematics. Um, they are uh, belonging to what's called the PNPC. And for instance, in computer science, uh, the master program is, is only one of the three programs in Mexico um, we, what, that got um, the label of international programming computer science. So, as I said, there is research, there is uh, a set of academic programs, and what's also very important, and especially in the context of, of this event, there is a whole technology transfer program department um, it's not only technology uh, transfer, it's actually a bit more general. It's also involved a lot in consultancy, uh, in setting up uh, particular uh, continuing education programs for government or for, for the industry. And of course, again, uh, covering the three basic areas of the, the research center. So below, you have a view of, of where we are right now in, 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 in CMAT, and this is uh, at the inside of the inside. Um, all what I was telling was uh, mainly focused on, on Guanajuato, and that's the main campus, the oldest campus, but there are also four uh, minor campus about 15 people working at each of them in Guanajuato, in Aguascalientes, Monterrey, Zacatecas, and Merida. CIMAT in numbers, it's like about 120 researchers, so Guanajuato and all the other areas, 
are about 270 masters and, and PhD students. And together with the University of Guanajuato, we have about 150 uh, undergraduate students. So CMAT is organized in, in, in a very, I would say, traditional way, uh, as you would expect at, at university. So we have three divisions, uh, pure applied mathematics, probability statistics, and computer science. What, what is actually very interesting is because there are so many common parts, there is a lot of interaction. Um, what I would like to stress is that if there is no pandemic, uh, usually there is a lot of, of, of academic activities. Um, not only, well, Guanajuato is a, a nice tourist um, city, um, but also we have some infrastructure, a, a guest house that allows us to receive uh, groups of students or resources up to, to 50 people. And, 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 and it's actually very common, especially for people who want to escape from big cities like Mexico City, um, to come for a week uh, for a workshop here uh, at, at Guanajuato. There are many partnerships with, with universities and institutions. In the context, again, of this event, I would like to, to stress especially uh, partnerships in, in, in the context of artificial intelligence. Um, what you see is here a list of other institutes similar to CMAT. They focus on slightly different areas, but they have a lot of common activities in the area of computer science, in, in the area of uh, artificial intelligence. And that was actually part of, of an initiative that CMAT has been uh, coordinating in the last couple of years. If we focus on the computer science group in, in, in Guanajuato, actually um, we are about with 16 researchers and, and, and 15 PhD students. So CMAT is still somehow small scale. Um, you can split up the activities into three major axes. The oldest one is related to image processing, and then afterwards it's extended to uh, vision, natural language processing, and, and machine learning in general. The second one, with very strong collaboration with uh, applied mathematics, is about optimization, numerical optimization, evolutionary opt uh, optimization methods, and so on, numerical methods, numerical modeling, and also uh, everything related to parallel computing. And then the last group is about robotics and intelligence systems. That's actually the most recent one. And here actually I would like to stress that um, last year uh, in the other campus, Zacatecas, um, they started a rather ambitious program in, in robotics. Here you have some keywords I don't will enter in, in all the, the details, uh, so please visit our um, webpage. Um, there I think you can find about everything. Okay, so I think I used my time. I hope that this gives you uh, a general overview of what CMAT is. And thanks, of course, to, to invite us to participate in this initiative. Okay, thanks, Johan. Do you have some remarks or questions about uh, this uh, presentation of uh, participant institutions? At this step, it seems no, because no one raises his hand, as, as I can see. Sonia, you say a word? Yeah, hartstikke bedankt <laughs> to eerst. Uh, I would like to thank you for your talk and for being here because of course CIMAT is very important for us because we're trying to, what actually we're trying to build is a Franco-Mexican network. Mm -hmm. Framex has just launched 
the network researchers France Mexico or Mexico France and then the people participating in this workshop all belong to this network that counts more or less 400 people right now. It's all disciplines, it's not just uh, one particular dis discipline, but this is the first workshop actually within this, uh, within this new frame. And one of the main subjects is of course, artificial intelligence. So it is really interesting that CIMAT and then this network that you have with other CONACYT institutes uh, is here today because I think on Friday we will all be able to discuss a little bit about the future in terms of, of research. Thank you uh, very much. Okay, uh, thank you, Sonia. So um, for now we will we'll have a presentation of the school and um, what leads uh, Victor and I um, to uh, to settle this school. And um, at first, um, I want to say that uh, what what leads us to to propose this school, um, it was as said uh, Victor. It was about uh, our history together because. Uh, it's a long story, as you say, and uh, at the beginning, we worked in the same field, uh, which was related more or less to um, uh, virtual reality or um, uh, computer graphics. And we are issued from, uh, from virtual reality teams. And so at first, uh, something like 20 years ago, we co-direct uh, several PhDs in that field, uh, dealing with uh, behavioral animation or um, uh, enviro di uh, virtual environment distributions or things like that. Um, then, uh, as, uh, as life goes, we uh, slightly modify our research field. Um, Victor goes more into, into the field of IoT. Uh, I go more into the field of uh, of um, artificial intelligence. In fact, my specialty is artificial life since the beginning, but uh, we express it more as artificial intelligence now. And then um, we, the activity we get together uh, slightly decreases and we want to, to find a way to continue working together. And so instead of uh, saying, how can we um, join forces in the same field for mastering PhD or things like that, we, we think that it could be now the time to join forces, but with uh, uh, complementary competencies, with complementary skills, um, and uh, to find how these skills could be some pieces that goes one with the other to uh, make uh, a, more, a more clever and a more uh, quality research. So that's the idea in the, in the back story of, uh, of this uh, workshop, this school. So um, the links that we can set is between uh, IoT and artificial intelligence. So we decide uh, to, for this first edition, to try to um, find ways to use data sensors, which are common in smart cities, um, a better, a better use to how to use them to uh, help people by the way of exploiting those data with artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. So the global context is about uh, Internet of Things and the data deluge, where there is sensor close to everywhere and with uh, 5G global connectivity, there will be more and more, we think. Um, there are several actions towards data availability. I will talk a little bit about that in the following slides about open data and open science. And uh, we need to propose new models to do research to propose models for uh, curation, storage, computing, and smart exploitation of data. And in that field, we think that artificial intelligence can help to automate 
uh, one of several steps of that field and to provide with better results than the one we got manually actually. So uh, starting with data sources, we can see that uh, data, data sources are now everywhere. We've got private uh, in uh, mostly in companies and, um, and also in, uh, in special labs or in medical science and we got op we've got now more and more open data. We can access those data um, either directly by gathering data and copying them or uh, through um, website APIs. There's a lot of uh, requests to make those data available uh, for open science. And we got direct access to several kinds of data by the way of sensors. For example, with uh, the flat and shows or uh, with uh, CT sensors, as we can see in the next presentation. There are also several identification and cross warehouse that catalog developments where uh, data in a particular field are identified and are stored uh, in a way that uh, it's usable uh, by specialists or by uh, people which, which can uh, catch the, this data and use uh, artificial intelligence to make a uh, better exploitation of the data. So, um, if you look at the creation step, the, it's a necessary step to propose quality data set, sets. And we've got to evaluate uh, the quality, the replicability, the representativity, the usability, and the conformity to standards of data. So all of these steps must take into account more and more uh, the ethical, uh, the ethics and ethical use of data is now a prerequisite for the citizen. As you can see, for example, if you look at the UNESCO initiative for artificial intelligence and, uh, and uh, data management, you can see that there is uh, some example of uh, ethical dilemmas with data which is because data sets are generally by nature unfair when they are based on real data because um, all, uh, all kind of, um, in a real data set, generally uh, all things are not represented the same uh, with the same uh, number of, uh, um, of representants. And there, is, there are a lot of new initiatives for data and artificial intelligence fair use. Uh, for example, uh, the regulation in Europe uh, and, and in California, several uh, public actions like um, Equitia, which is uh, an association dedicated to the um, uh, fair use of uh, data for, uh, for sharing data and for artificial intelligence. And what is requested more and more is to uh, have data which is ethics by design and to ensure that this data uh, follow ethics by design. And it's not just a statement saying, okay, my data, my data um, is ethic by design, but no one can see how I can say that. So the idea is to have some tools which helps to ensure those regulations. Concerning storage, uh, the idea is to find a suitable data model uh, situate, located generally in a reference frame uh, and to find a good way to store and to retrieve data, uh, either with uh, old models like uh, structured that, uh, databases or unstructured ones, uh, more, uh, more used uh, in the field of sensors, to propose data warehouse and an organization which enables to um, uh, retrieve efficiently data uh, by a good identification, by a good categorization of data, and also uh, by providing with uh, the requested uh, speed uh, needed for exploiting um, efficiently this data. There's also another question, which is, um, 
something very specific. It's long-term archiving because we now generate a lot, of, a lot of data, but how this data will be and could be exploited in a 20 or a half a century, we don't know. So there's also a question about what kind of data do we retrieve and how to ensure it could be usable in, uh, in several years. Computing in the field of uh, IoT and artificial intelligence begins by a strong data set exploration. And Johan will provide in his course on, uh, on Wednesday some clues about how to make a good exploration of data. Then we find a lot of, uh, of models, either supervised or unsupervised, um, which are based either on statistical, on classical statistical algorithm or on learning models, uh, like for example, uh, deep learning or using artificial evolution. And for manipulating this data, uh, one needs high performance computing environments. So uh, the computing power is, is also a question. Um, we need supercomputers for manipulating uh, efficiently uh, high, um, high uh, volume of data. Uh, so we need to have uh, HPC computers. Victor and Anne show that uh, they, uh, they propose in their environment to have uh, HPC. Um, one talks also about uh, new architectures for which are called HPDA, high performance for data analysis, uh, which is another kind of architecture based on uh, the idea to provide with a high throughput of data, uh, more than just computing. And all those um, computing environments and how data are manipulated have also to be questioned because uh, it costs a lot in terms of uh, electrical power, for example. And, uh, and so um, uh, we have to think a little bit how we manipulate data, what we are doing, because it has a, an environmental cost and we have to minimize, as we all know, uh, this environmental impact of our research. And at last, but the most important is to provide with a smart exploitation of data. Because um, we don't exploit data for exploiting data, we exploit data to provide services for the people, for the citizen. And uh, so uh, we want, we have to fulfill societal objectives beyond the simple technical operation. And uh, so we got to respect privacy and also to open what we do for others to, uh, to replicate or to uh, propose new enhancements. And in that, um, in that way, the FAIR principles, which allows to um, reuse data and to open them to others, are a good starting point for researchers, for example to make their data available to others. So I will let Victor continue. And then we, we find an application domain, which is, a, as I told before, a big umbrella that we call the smart cities. But the, the difference, for example, uh, working on mobility on the smart cities and just only working on mobility uh, for a city, is that we consider that mobility is part of a complex system. And from this complex system, mobility is affected not only by the devices and, and transport systems that are just interconnected, but also is affected probably by the economists that place the jobs in a different place where the people live. And uh, depending on the economy also, uh, it affects the health of the people so it's connected to the healthcare system because the budget that you're expending for, for healthcare can run uh, <clears throat> higher if you are doing a lot of pollution with your mobility system and so on. Uh, that's 
why smart cities is looking to unify these silos that worked alone before and now they need to work together to minimize the impacts and to create something that is very sustainable and we respond to the call in 2010 from the united nations uh, that predicted that the 70 percent of the world population in 2050 will be living in cities in fact in mexico that happened since uh 10 years ago 70 or 80 percent of the population is just concentrated uh, from the whole mexico in the biggest cities of mexico uh, but also we talk about the concept of of what is the mega cities which is a city with more than 10 million inhabitants and we are rising very fast from uh, 35 uh, mega cities in the world to 100 mega cities that we expect so we we need to, to explore solutions and it's not possible for these complex systems to do it by hand just as traditional governments uh, are doing uh, it's too exhaustive that that technology can bring a spark and 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 uh, another way to 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 help to mitigate and and to solve some of the problems uh, that, that we have in cities uh, and that's why the united nations created these sustainable goals where most of the cities are taken as metrics very general and the ultimate goal we're looking is how we can improve uh, the quality of life in cities and our biggest tool is all the data traces that we're leaving there so i just put two blocks just to show two cities uh to lose that is growing uh, but it's very stable because they, they have 1.025 million inhabitants and guadalajara that exploded because 10 years ago we were close to 3 million of inhabitants and now we are just 5.2 million inhabitants uh, and continue growing very fast on the development. If we can go to the next slide. So we believe we have challenges there and with the data, we need to find uh, which will be the, the principal cake performance indicators, these metrics, and find how we're going to use the different domains. So that means that you can play with uh, how to fusion data uh, from different sources to, to learn about some data that we don't have access uh, probably now in the city. And then we have this uh, cycle of using sensors, uh, storing data, which is a new asset for the cities. Uh, this historical data is very valuable, but still one of the main challenges is how to create this that data that are represented and creating this data takes usually like the 60 60 percent of the effort that you have and then you can run analytics visualization and help on decisions not only for the people in the government but also for the citizens when you use google map for example wow. in your mobile phone you have a lot of information that runs there we can go to the next and then this is what we uh, state as considerations when you are planning a solution uh, we need to think that solutions should be secure uh, because you are connecting a lot of devices that in bad hands they can stop the water or the energy supply for for, for a, a neighborhood or for a, for a city uh, we have seen in in the world situations where it happened with hackers uh, you need to keep resiliency how fast you can connect your system uh, if it fails so uh, you, you give a continuous service depending on how critical it is for the for the people uh, then you need to think uh, in in modules that you can assembly that can work from one system and then you can reuse for another system uh, but most important is in yellow is scalability usually when you speak about internet of things uh, you think uh, everybody says that you can have your coffee maker automated when you wake up the coffee is going to be ready and then the lights are going to be off when you have the sunlight and all of that. But that's, that's easy in a context uh, of, of a home. But when you think about the thousands of uh, public uh, uh, lights that you have on the streets that you need to coordinate in an efficient way to keep energy, but in other way to keep safety for the people, that makes the difference. And then <clears throat> most important is once you scale, how do you make this interoperability of all the different systems you are connecting and how they talk together? Because since 40 years, we have all this area that we call domotics. We have 
these nomotics in buildings, but they were closed systems. They didn't speak from one company to another company. So you were uh, just with the need to, to implement from one company. And, and that didn't make to, to, to advance. And now in the cities, you need to interoperate all the systems to fuse all the data that you have. And as possible as, as, as you, you, you can to be open um, with data, especially offering repositories, but keeping the privacy of, of the users there. So these are some guidelines that you can keep for your projects. If you are going to be on the hackathon or you are planning to deploy some solution for the city, probably you will be more focused on one of, of these properties, but for sure scalability is one of the most important as well as interoperability behind. If we can go for the next. Well, this is usually how we structure the layers in a city. You have uh, connectivity, which is the core. Without connectivity, we cannot bring some, some data and, and move it and process it. Um, then you have some structure, infrastructure that you put, uh, that you connect uh, in, the, in the city with some IoT sensors. And you can have artificial intelligence already running with this edge computing on the sensors, on the actuators, uh, and just leave a small uh, data to go to the higher levels, which is more for the operation and optimization where you can run complex analytics and visualization and support uh, decision making. Just saying that for the last level, uh, in many projects, for example, uh, surveying the, the energy consumption in houses, they explode on data. Uh, so there are many challenges still to, 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 to run, but this is just also to give you an idea of how you can structure your solution and how you can locate where you want to, to tackle a problem um, to, to, to be part of this ecosystem. If we can go to the next. Well, this is uh, what I presented. So it's just a reference. We can go to the next, that's fast. And then Hervé, I leave the words to, to Hervé. Okay, so um, as I said before, the objective of the school is to propose new paradigms for the effective use of IoT data with a focus on uh, IoT data issued from smart cities. Um, to propose example of such interaction between uh, artificial intelligence and IoT. And then in the background, but uh, the most important of, part of the school is to reinforce links between researchers in France and, and Mexico in the field of artificial intelligence and IoT to uh, foster the opportunities for developing new common projects and also um, to, uh, to connect those projects, to, those projects to real needs from academia to industry and city governments. It means not to do um, uh, only uh, research, but to, to do a, a research which could be used in the real world and to have direct links with, those re with this real world. So I think that we have described the school schedule, so we can go to the next one. Well, just to say that we have a lot of partners. Uh, we're very happy that we have uh, from the governments, the universities, we, we have in our next talk, the, the municipality of, of Toulouse, of the city of Toulouse. But uh, we have prestigious universities from both countries. Uh, and we have also the, the industry that is looking on this approach, how they can connect and how they can land a solution that will not be just a, a dream of, of the academy uh, and, and researchers, but also uh, to what is needed today in, in the in the industry, like Continental, which is working with a lot of um, connected vehicles, IBM that have different fields, but they, they are supporting a lot uh, artificial intelligence with Watson, and they have very interesting use cases, and and they are very open to co to cooperate. And inside Empresas, which is working with the small companies that happens similarly in, in Toulouse, uh, <clears throat> that are just uh, they are not the startups, they, they are companies with 10 years, 15 years of experience, but the small companies still that are doing a, a lot of, uh, of, of projects and they are looking how to innovate. So when they come to the uh, academia and, and they connect with the culture of the big companies, they have other possibilities. And that's 
something that we are looking and and then we have of course uh big institutions from uh, the government of of mexico like like education and from the from the government of of france so we keep a very good balance with move from x okay Hervé. okay so uh one th one things we one thing we want to emphasize on is um, the poster session uh, because as you can see uh, we um, participants and organizers talk a lot we've got uh, you got courses you got uh, also presentation of uh, more uh, institutional um, uh, organization and um, the idea is also to have a presentation of what students do and uh, what what are your projects so we got a special uh, session for that which is on wednesday at the beginning at four or 9 a.m in mexico uh, this is a virtual poster session so um, i want uh, we want you to we need you to participate so uh, if you if you want to present your project uh, I propose that you send me an email. I will put my email uh, into the chat, uh, and then you you can uh, have a five minute slot for presentation of your master and PhD project. So uh, we need you to fill uh, that session, uh, else uh, it will be uh, difficult uh, for us to have uh, to have uh, several things to propose. So it's uh, the idea is to make exchanges. We can do. We cannot make a global um, uh, overview of, of what is doing each uh, of you. So uh, we prefer that uh, you you be candidate and uh, want to participate to this virtual poster session. So uh, to summarize, uh, if possible, we want you to uh, to make a five minute presentation on Wednesday morning or evening in France. And uh, for that purpose, uh, just send me an email saying that you want to, to, uh, to present and I will uh, reserve you a five minute slot and uh, set, settle uh, a schedule accordingly. So, Now uh, I will uh, let um, Miss Maton uh, from uh, Toulouse Metropole uh, to present uh, to present uh, the Toulouse Metropole initiative about open data. So, uh, Madame Maton, it's to you. I have to leave the screen. I think. Yes, I think it's okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, perfect. it's perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I think you can't see me. No. Okay, well, you can see how I am. I represent you uh, open data and EA data in Toulouse and use and reuse. Um, little presentation, if it works. Yes. So Toulouse and the digital department. So Toulouse Metropole, uh, as you can see um, before, it's a group of um, 37 cities, many inhabitants, uh, River Garonne, uh, 16 uh, kilometers in, in town, uh, many public gardens, as you, as you can see uh, behind uh, Hervé, even 18 hectares of wine and the second university in France and the fourth urban area in France. Uh, Toulouse Metropole uh, is a, is a city organization, 13,000 civil servants, two different jobs, chef, legalist, dustman, teaching assistant, philharmonic orchestra, museum, IT engineers. As you see, it's uh, many, many uh, different jobs. And for IT, as you can see, it's uh, also uh, a, a big machine with a uh, 11,000 PCs, many machines include the virtual machine, two data centers, and uh, many softwares for the 70 
un business units. And the budget is also uh, something big. So Open Metropolis, uh, it was a, a way between uh, 2015 and 2020 with uh, five ambition about mobilities, breathable, international, well-being, and uh, beautiful, clean and sure. And on uh, free, free base data, citizen and public private, and with many tools, events, experimentation, demonstration, and uh, and jobs. Free principles of open metropolis, citizen at the heart of a process, public sectors and private companies co-construction, and shared public data as foundation. And I will present you this one, shared public data. So open data, little timeline. But if you want, I can uh, send the presentation to Hervé uh, in order to share it after because there is, uh, there is uh, figures and there is links on it. Uh, if you want, it will be easier for you. As you can see, everything begins with the French Revolution, as usual in France, and many laws. The last, the most recent is uh, 2016, the law for a republic, numeric republic, and uh, impose uh, the obligation of uh, open data. So open data by default. And now in September, last September, there is, as you see, many cities. The green APC is a group of cities and department and every region have opened their data. 10 years of experience in Toulouse Metropole because we launched open data exactly, most exactly 10 years ago. We began with uh, 31 data sets and now we have uh, more than 500, 6 million records, 2 million downloads, and 17 million API calls. And the most important, and we are our first customers. The legal we use, we now use an open license. You have the links in the bottom of the page. And the reuser are free to reuse the information, to reproduce it, copy it, to adapt, modify, retrieve, and transform it in order to create derived information, products, and services, to share, disseminate, redistribute, publish, transmit it, etc. But we have to acknowledge the authorship of the information source and the date of the most recent update. This is the only thing you have to do, but it's very important. Another thing, it's urban data platform, which is called IA Data. It's a big data platform. Uh, as you can see, it's the skyline of Toulouse. The IA Data in the Open Metropolis is one of the 15 jobs in the smart city. They are considered as the base of the approach. And we want to create a data ecosystem in Toulouse with the community and its partners, especially academics. Want to storage, process, analysis, architecture consolidated by powerful security system, governance, a technical device, being, of course, a smart administration to improve efficiency and digital transformation. And we want to have a real public sovereignty. And in order to that, we are building our proper big data platform ourselves in our data center, which is uh, in the basement of a building where I am today with our team specially hired. So why this project? The platform with all real-time data, massive data, historization of data, data from IoT, technical, legal, organizational surrounding, automatization of the data in the city. We want to make a real saving of time for existing ex exchange inside the, uh, the city. And we have data-centric purpose by default data model, electronic archives, and development of new uses of the data. So we share our data inside the departments 
inside the city and outside with partners. And all of this to, with implementation of our governance in order to develop an ecosystem in Toulouse and larger than Toulouse with our um, several partners. So I will show you two use cases. First one with central kitchen in school canteens. We had three problems. Respect of our reglementation, we have to inform families about allergens in meals, how, how we fix it, we open the data. We had a lack of communication to families and how we fix it. Well, a startup, local startup has taken the data and made an app. So this app is in French, Kidim Yam. In English, you can translate it as who says yum. And uh, the local uh, can uh, download this, uh, this app and, uh, and see every day what the children are eating in elementary school or kindergarten school. And we had also poor transversality. And with that system, we share the data between business units, central kitchen, communication, and education department. After I will show you uh, on the website. The next step with uh, this uh, opening of the data is how to avoid food wastage. And this is, it's in progress, of course. Huh? The situation every day, 30,000, 35,000 meals are prepared for children in our central kitchen for the 200, more than 200 primary schools and king, kindergarten. So the target is to avoid food wastage with productivity of presence in each cantil in each school. Uh, that's, it's very difficult. The global result, result of the current algo, gave a perspective of 3.5% of economy. Like when you say, when you think a meal costs about seven or eight euro by meal, if you save a thousand of them, it's a, at the end of the year, it's a huge economy. Well, this is what we do now, comparative of a prisons and uh, the meal, but now we have it all schools together. So the next few weeks, we will make an improvement of the algorithm, prediction of a school by school in order to prepare the just number of meals and in order to deliver the just number of meals in each school. Next week's we have a knowledge of a taste of a children with a certification survey. And then we will implement connecting beans in 20 canteens in order to have data and to create a new algo about composition of a menu. It's not a big surprise, but does the children prefer French fries or Brussels sprouts? We will have the objective uh, uh, answer with the beans and the survey. The second use case is a European heat island. We had in the city 73 weather station with IoT and a remote temperature, wind and rain. I will show you it after. As you see, there is the weather station and we can show and compare every station. So we have the weather in real time. So in meteor real time in each 15 minutes and one data set per station. And we open the data of every station on the open, da uh, open data platform. This is one example, what you see. And you can, you have uh, the information, you can see anal analysis, export, download with API. And what we do with those data, we met, we made a map generator with a uh, heat island, urban heat island. This is an example and a library of typical maps. Typ typical maps of in summer, in winter, when it's uh, windy, when it's cloudy, and we are download, um, have heat in a cartothèque. And who use those data and maps? Maps from IA data used by town planning department environment department and the environment department has win a national project on summer comfort and we use uh, the maps to to go with this project 
massive data are downloaded by citizens from the open data, and also Meteo France, which is national weather forecast using these, those data. Where can you find data for your hackathon at the end of the week? Also, there is several uh, platforms. You see, there is a link between behind each image. That's why I will give you a presentation after. And now I will show you if I can download, um, share my screen or the screen. I will show you some uh, the open data platform and the EA data platform. Can you see uh, the yes, new it's screen? Perfect. Okay. So there is something. It's not uh, by hazard. I show you station, which is a land in the uh, Paul Sabatier University, of course. The last modification is uh, just uh, three quarter before. Well, and now as you see in uh, free, uh, free, free, uh, in the afternoon it was 19 degrees, 44 percent of humidity, etc. And Yeah, data. There is two comparison of two um, weather station. The first, uh, first in uh, in blue, is a uh, Lebusca, which is uh, approximately two hundred meters from uh, where you are, Hervé. Yeah. Uh, no, voilà. Here, because oh, I'm lost in my map. Well, never mind. And the green is about uh, University Paul Sabatier, and there is two degrees difference, three degrees difference, difference between the two uh, the two stations. Oui. Ah, is it better now? Since you say two comparisons. Yes, uh, two comparisons between two stations. The first, the blue one, is a uh, 200 near view, Hervé, and the green one is in Paul Sabatier. I don't know if you hear me, if you can see it. No, in fact, it's no? okay. It's just my speaker that sort of stops suddenly. Oh, okay, now it's okay. And for the other, the first use case about the menu of a canteen. Well, you have the menu. So well, you can see what we hit next next days. Well, it's not very interesting. But with a waste. Well, we have a menu. I pick a, a day. Anyway, well, we can see what uh, adult in uh, kindergarten uh, eaten on the 14th of June and uh, the, the part of uh, meals with uh, meat or without meat. And this is what we are trying to do, the comparative of presence and 
in few weeks we can have with a new algo the productivity of a of a presence of a of a children and the adults in order to to prepare the just number of meals. And just before uh, some uh, somebody talks about IoT, I will show you something. Something we, we doesn't open because it's not stable. We have a sensor of pedestrian around the Place du Capitole. And show you one. And you can see the last hour, 2,000 people cross the street. And since this morning, uh, 25,000 people are going. And the most uh, displacements is in direction of the place. And we can have analysis well, when there is many people, less, more. Unfortunately, we can't share, we can't open this data because this sensor is OK, but this one is down. This one is down. This one is OK. So it's a, a little problem for us. But there is, uh, it's experimental. The sensors are situated in um, city lights. And we are trying to, to have it, to have it stable and to have um, the transportation of the data between the city lights and the, the data platform. Well, if you have any question, I can answer you. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Sandrine. Um, I've got one question. Uh, I've seen that your data is available either by downloading the data or uh, by the web interface or by, by an API. Um, yes. All of the, the APIs are documented inside the website. Yes, uh, yeah, they are. Uh, I will show you if I. If I take any data set, there is many rubber station, of course. Which one? Uh, this one, the uh, API, and there is documentation. So you can. Uh, You can have it and uh, use it as you want. Okay, nice. I think it would be a great use for uh, for the hackathon. Yes, of course. Yeah, and I hope that we we will uh, we will have good use of uh, all the the great number of data sets that you provide. I also hope huh? that's why we we open it. Okay. Are there any other questions? Yes, oh, someone. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, I just wanted to know to who the second platform is open. Can anybody use the AI platform you presented or is it only for your partners? The AI, uh, AI uh, data platform is uh, for now only um, for for the for the city. I mean, it's side platform and for partners. It's not open. Okay, and I had a, just another question: In what format uh, are the data available on the on the first platform? Uh, many, many, many. I will show you again. That depends on the, on the data set, of course. Huh? But there is a uh, several uh, format. I 
if you want to download them, you have CSV, JSON, Excel. But that depends of, um, of a data set. If it's uh, there is with a geographic or no. Okay. Because do you, do you have use a RDF format? So like semantic web format or, or not? Uh, or it I, I'm not sure. Like that. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> Okay, so okay. thanks again, Sandrine, for presenting uh, this initiative, which is very impressive. Thank you. And, um, we will, uh, we, you are uh, cordially invited for uh, seeing the results of the hackathon on Thursday, if you are available. Uh, I send uh, this I will say it, I will see it. Else it will be uh, recorded. So okay. We can have a look. Okay. So if you want, I can send you a presentation. If you, if uh, the students want to have um, the links. Yeah, we will make the present all the presentations and uh, also the the record available to uh, everyone. Okay. So if you can send me the presentation, it's, it's nice. Okay. Well, we'll do it uh, just after. Okay. So I just want to, to present one thing. To finish uh, this global session. So um, the next event are two courses. Uh, the first one from uh, Professor Anne Laurent that we see in, in the presentation of uh, ISDM. And the second one from uh, Dr. Cusat Blanc from uh, IRIT and also uh, Aniti co-chair uh, about machine learning. So for each of these courses, you got uh, one link. I think that Morgan sent you the, the links, but what I propose is, is to put the links uh, inside uh, of the chat, in the global chat uh, room. So uh, you can copy it somewhere uh, in any uh, text pad and, uh, and then share uh, and then use the link uh, for connecting to the courses. So I'm doing this just now.